Okay, well, I've traveled a little bit of distance here to uh, photograph these two semi-trailers that say Jesus, Jesus on them. Um, I thought it was sort of an interesting roadside, uh, sort of Americana symbol, uh, a little bit of, well, not a little bit, but obvious religious overtones here. I just thought it was sort of interesting. Um, this general area is where I've scoped out my composition. Um, so I'm gonna get set up here and go ahead and take the shot. I was hoping that there'd be a few more clouds. Um, this is about an hour away from my home. So I was uh, hoping there'd be a few more clouds, but um, I've got a pretty plain sky, which I'm gonna have to work with. Um, probably put some of this stuff here in the foreground for basic foreground elements to add some depth, and then maybe have dropped the composition down a little bit so there's not as much sky. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get set up and we'll get started and take the shot. So I already kind of assessed this shot with my uh, compositional aid and have decided that a 210 lens ought to get the coverage that I require or desire for the shot. So let's use the 210 lens. I'm thinking about putting a yellow filter or yellow orange uh, number 15 on this shot, sort of darken up the sky a little bit, give me a little more contrast. I'll probably shoot one with and without just for good measure. Looks like I'll have to do a front swing to get the focal plane how I'd like it in this shot. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna make some basic refinements to this shot. Um, you know, I don't have to video that whole thing. Basically, I'm gonna dial in the uh, exact composition I want and do all the tilts that I need. I'll definitely have to do a front tilt and a front swing to get the, uh, the focus that I want. But um, as soon as I get that set up, I'll turn the video camera back on and then we'll take the shot. Okay, well, I've got everything set up on this shot now. I had to drop the camera down a little bit on the tripod, just get a um, lower angle, and then I did a, um, a front shift down on it, a front swing and a front tilt, and a rear tilt also to correct for perspective. So there's quite a bit of movement on here. I've already metered the scene. It's pretty straightforward, F32 at a fourth of a second and that's accommodating for the, uh, the yellow 15 filter, which is a yellow-orange mix. Um, recently, I had uh, picked up this RPT cascading film holder, and this is the first time I've been able to use it. Unfortunately, um, they don't make these anymore, so if you find some on the used market and are interested, they're pretty handy little things. As you see here, you just open it up and it cascades down, and then you swing this over, and all of your film holders are right here. This holds three 8x10 film holders, and it's kind of nice. It's light tight. It's got some nice little pockets with zippers on it. 
So I think this is a pretty handy little thing to have. It's uh, compact and portable. Again, RPT cascading 8x10 film holder. So I've got everything set up. The wind's not kicking up too bad, so I just have to wait for that moment. Again, all I need is a fourth of a second. Um, let's make sure the camera's cocked and give it a test fire here. All right, we look good. Yeah, so all this setting up for a fourth of a second, but this is the way it goes. Hopefully the clouds, there's a few more clouds off in the distance now. Um, they're not that, not that, not as impressive as I would have liked. And again, I'm using a 210 millimeter lens, so they appear a little small in the composition. Um, but hopefully the yellow filter brings out a little bit more there, darkens the sky a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this shot taken. All right. Double check if I cocked it again. Sometimes I do that, I, I test cock it and test fire, and then I forget to cock it again. All right, we're good to go. So I'm just gonna duck down here and get, just gonna duck down here and get the film holder out, but so I'll go out of camera for a little bit. What I'm doing right now is taking the tape off of the film holder. I put a piece of gaffer's tape over the film holder as a secondary measure so that the dark slide won't accidentally get pulled out. And then I'll give the holder a little tap. Settle the film. All right. Make sure it's seated properly. All right. We are ready to go. Make sure that my dark cloth's not covering the lens. Check my settings one more time. You can't check often enough. All right. Let's pull the dark slide. And... All right, so the wind's kicking up a little bit here. I just have to wait a moment. As I said, I only need a fourth of a second, but I really don't want any motion blur. Now there's a bird going through the composition. So just a waiting game now. Make sure the dark cloth didn't go in front of the lens. I'm waiting here. See, the dark cloth kind of moved in front. Some people wonder why I use the dark cloth to cover the camera, but I don't want to risk any light leak from the bellows. So it's just a habit I've gotten into. Some people do it, some people don't. I figure you can never be too careful. All right, so we wait some more. See, there's these plants right in the foreground that I'm concerned about. There's going to be a break eventually. This probably makes for some really exciting video, but this is the reality of shooting. I'm still waiting. I'm watching these foreground plants. All right, here we go. Okay, I think I got it there. There was just a little bit of time. Make sure I reverse the dark slide to black. I, I haven't done that in a while. I accidentally put the dark slide in the wrong way to indicate that it was exposed. But uh, you, you can never be too careful. You gotta double check and triple check.
Okay, so I'm putting the tape back on the holder now. Again, that, this tape, which you can't see me putting on, is just a secondary measure so that the dark slides don't accidentally get pulled out. I mean, I know there's the safeties. I'm going out of camera again, but there's the safeties on the, the holders, but sometimes they get moved out of the way, and um, I don't want to risk that. I had that happen once before. <clears throat> okay, so I think that was a pretty straightforward shot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, open up the lens again and I'm going to check everything. After every shot I take, I always, um, I always like to double check everything to make sure I didn't miss something in the composition um, while I still have the camera set up. It doesn't take that much effort just to open the lens again and then recheck everything. Um, you know, I've got a few more sheets of film and therefore if I need to take it again, I can. So uh, I'll just check that again and then I'll pack the camera up and head on out. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just stopping the lens down again and making sure that F32 was adequate um, to get the depth of field I want. You know, it, it takes a little bit more time, but I figure since I already have the camera set up, I mean, I spent a lot of time setting it up and I'm fairly certain that the exposure I took was fine. But since I already had the camera set up, I like to, to check everything and make sure that everything's good. Like, I think that I might take one more of these at F45, just to stop down from F32. I think, you know, you go through all this effort, and what does it take to shoot one more shot just to ensure? I don't ever like going down to, I don't like going down to F64, but I feel confident I have the shot, but I, I really want this to turn out, and why not just take one more? So. I shot a F32 at a fourth of a second. Oh, I'm using FP4 on this shot, rated at 100. So I shot a F32 at a fourth of a second. So I'm gonna take one more at F45 at half a second, just for good measure um, on the depth of field. It's basically the same exposure. I'm just, same exposure. I'm just stopping down uh, one more stop for depth of field purposes, just to ensure. So again, I've gotta go out of, out of camera for my gotta go out of camera for my film holder settle the film all right so hopefully now I can have half a second that the wind is settled for me check all my settings again F45 at half a second, shutter's cocked. All right, we're ready to go. I always figure you can never, I mean, I know that film is, a, eight by 10 film can get a little expensive, but I don't think that people who are shooting eight by 10, well, I mean, especially if you're shooting a shot you really care about, um, you know, I mean, what's, a, what's four or five more dollars with the black and white to ensure that you've got the shot that you want? All right, so we're ready to go. Got everything set up, get my cable release. And here comes the wind, of course. Well, we might have a few more clouds that have come in too, so that could be good. All right, I think we're Luckily the light has held. Yeah, see we've got these small little plants that just keep moving. I need half a second. All right, actually I think I got it right there. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna mark these holders N minus one. These two shots that I've taken. These videos, um, I like to think that sometimes, you know, they're definitely for large format shooters because 
I doubt that people who, uh, I doubt that people who, um, aren't large format shooters really care about watching this for all this time. Um, so, alright, I think I've got everything. Can't get this back in here. This is interesting. Hmm. Trying to get the, the film back in the, the film holder back in, and it won't quite go. Okay, there we are. All right. So, I've got that shot all taken care of. I'm going to pack the camera up and head on down the road. Maybe I'll find another shot, maybe not. Um, this was really my sole purpose today was to get this particular shot, so I'm pretty pleased with it. I'll go back and develop it and we'll see how it turned out. So thanks for watching.